Before connecting an audio source to my mix, it's important to turn the gain knobs completely down to avoid any loud popping noises or potential feedback. And this just eliminates any unnecessary or unwanted surprises for your bandmates as well. So everybody will appreciate the fact that you've turned the gain knobs down before you actually hooked up an audio source. My mix utilizes combo jacks for the input section, allowing for the connection of both quarter inch and XLR cable ends. So my mix will accept line level, instrument level, and mic level sources. You can use dynamic or condenser mics, and you actually go in and select phantom power enabling in the settings menu to power condenser mics. In this case, we're connecting the output of an acoustic guitar to input number one, and a vocal mic into input number two. With the audio source playing at normal volume, or what you would normally play, or even the loudest volume you're going to be playing at, slowly increase the gain until the input LED turns red. You should also notice that the name of the input that is overloading is flashing on the main screen. This input name will flash red on the screens of every MyMix attached to the network as an additional means to alert you to a signal input overload. So your band members have a chance to let you know when you're overloading a signal just in case you're not paying attention. MyMix gives you two output options. The rear balanced line level outputs for connecting to devices such as a power amplifier, a powered loudspeaker, or in-ear monitor transmitters and a side-mounted headphone jack for connecting headphones or earbuds. Both outputs are always active and always share the same signal. Like any headphone jack, the impedance of your headphones will affect overall output levels. However, my mix was designed to be plenty loud, enough for use in a live setting. So be careful, as excessive sound pressure levels on earplugs, headphones, or even loudspeakers can damage your hearing and cause hearing loss. My mix is a networked system, and the units talk to each other through their RJ45 network jacks using standard CAT5 cables. Now you can also use CAT6 cables. A typical My mix system consists of more than one unit. If you're using just two My mix, they can be connected directly to each other without the need for an Ethernet switch. So just take the cable, hook one end into the first My mix, and the other end directly into the second My mix. When using three or more MyMix, you'll need to use a standard off-the-shelf 100 megabit per second Ethernet switch to connect the units. If you already have a non-PoE switch, you can buy individual power injectors and use those to power my mixes as well. This works well when you only need to power a couple of my mix with PoE and the rest can be powered by the included power supplies. An example of this would be using three power injectors to power the my mix for the vocalists on the front of the stage, but using the power supplies to power the units by the keyboards and the drums. My mix comes with a power supply, but it's also possible to power it with a PoE or Power Over Ethernet enabled switch. Just make sure the PoE switch you're using is capable of 15 watts of output on every port simultaneously. You can see here that as soon as we connect this PoE switch to my mix, it automatically powers the my mix and it saves on cable runs for the power supplies. Check www.mymixaudio.com for a list of recommended switches. MyMix units will auto-discover all of the inputs on the network once they're connected to the switch, generally within 2-3 to three seconds. Your two inputs are always prioritized to the top of your screen, and then they're prioritized in alphabetical order by the name of the unit and then by the inputs. As you connect each MyMix to the switch, you'll see that your unit and every other unit on the network starts recognizing every unit that's on the network. <laughs> 